So you wanna plate faster. This is the second most popular speed-related question that I get from professional chefs on the topics of improving knife skills and just prepping faster. And in case you're new, I've got two other videos on the channel as part of this series in relation to fitness and progressive overload and how can we use those ideas and use them to progress in professional environments. So I have the pleasure of welcoming you to the first reps for plating. Yes, this is a seemingly weird but incredibly practical video. And shout out to those of you that have been patient on an update to this series. Also, yes, there is a free PDF download for this so that you can track your progress. You can check that out right below the like button. Let's get right into it. What is up, folks? My name is Justin Kana. To complement this video, I went way deep on multiple lessons specifically related to plating, speed, workflow stuff, and that's on the Repertoire YouTube channel. I highly recommend you check that out first. And if plating isn't a part of your work responsibilities yet, you can just watch this video and then go there and come back, take these in tandem. But a lot of what I'm gonna cover here today relates to the info I share there. So if I lose you at any point, definitely go pause, check out those videos and then come back. Let's quickly touch on the supplies that you're gonna need for this reps exercise, as well as some backups in case you can't get certain items. For gear and equipment, you can use whatever alternatives you work with on a regular basis, but this is what I will be working with. You're gonna need an offset spatula, a spoon that you like to plate with, a pair of tweezers, a bain-marie or a container that you wanna store those tools in. You'll also need a deli container, a sauce pot that's reasonably easy to hold with one hand, as well as a tray to store your ingredients on. Additionally, you'll need a squeeze bottle and a mandolin. Next up, let's talk ingredients. We will effectively be making different types of mise en place using, believe it or not, ketchup, and potatoes for this edition of reps. I know it sounds weird and if you've got prep that's ready to go, whether you bring it home with you or you do prep for like pop-up stuff on your days off, you can certainly use that. But just like how I wanted this to be approachable and practical with all the other ingredients we used in this series, the same rules apply here. So most of you, regardless of where you live, can find a way to get ketchup and potatoes. I'm using russet potatoes. You can use Yukon gold potatoes. It helps if they're kind of a substantial size so that we can make different cuts from them. Small ones like fingerling potatoes might be a little bit more difficult, but that's all you're gonna need to execute this. To start, let's simulate a fluid gel, which is all ready to go with ketchup, since most are made infinitely better with xanthan gum. I have a whole rant I go on with homemade or in-house made ketchups without xanthan gum. I prefer it this way. And so to do this, we'll just transfer the ketchup to a squeeze bottle of choice. Any bottle that you have that comes to a tip versus these vacuum style ones that often get used in the ketchup bottles themselves is what we want. Secondly, we're gonna put more ketchup into two other containers. So one is going to be our sauce pot and one inside of a plastic deli container. For the deli container, we're just gonna leave that as is, and that's gonna simulate like your vegetable puree or your paste, anything that you can smear onto a plate. And for the sauce pot, we're just gonna add a little bit of water and dilute this until it's the consistency of a thick sauce. If you happen to be really struggling with plating more of like a vinaigrette or a thin sauce that notoriously drips and you're trying to focus on not dripping as you're plating, you can definitely make this thinner for a greater challenge, but mine is gonna be saucy. Next up for the potato, I'm gonna take this russet potato and make four different elements with mine. To start, I'm gonna make some planks by squaring off all four sides of the potatoes. Save these other parts, we're definitely gonna be using these in a second. Take your planked potatoes and slice them on a mandolin to get these ribbons. You want these thin enough so that they're pliable, and if you end up doing this with carrots or celery or rhubarb or scallions, and you can certainly do the old shock in ice water and make them curly. For my prep, I'm just gonna keep these in ice water so they don't oxidize. To get even more use out of these ribbons, I'm gonna take four or five of them, I'm gonna stack them, and then I'm gonna cut them at an angle, and these are gonna mirror herbs or vegetable shavings, you know, like radish shaves or anything like that that you typically plate with, that's what it's gonna mirror, and we're gonna use these in the exercise. Trust me, you'll see. To finish, we're gonna take those cheeks, those you know sides of squared off potato that you reserved, and we're gonna do two cuts from these. One is gonna be an oblique cut, so chunky geometric pieces. These will effectively be a stand-in for like medium dice or Parisienne balls or literally anything else on your prep list where you do like three per plate or five per plate. Last up, we will do some steaks of these potatoes. So picture this like the piece of fish or the chicken leg or the slice of lamb neck. This is the main center point of the plate. and everything else we have is garnish for this element. All right, next up, we're gonna fill out our worksheet. As I mentioned, this is available to download absolutely free as a PDF. It's down below in the description. You're gonna wanna print this out and we're basically gonna document what this dish requires from us, as well as follow the order of operations for this dish. 
If that's confusing, please check out the video I made on the Repertoire YouTube channel. And there you can also reference which layout you're gonna use. And you can check out that deep dive to get more information. Using this worksheet is super important because if you're truly wanting to see progress over time, it's important that every single variable in the equation is the same. For best results, pick a set of ingredients and prep and your layout might change, the number of plates you use might change. But most of you know this, if you take out a component or add in a component, that directly impacts the number of times you have to touch that plate and that's gonna screw with your time. And so if you end up changing your ingredients, your number of components, that's totally fine. Just make a new sheet. It sounds like a little bit more work, but trust me, it's gonna be all the more satisfying to know that your progress is real progress. All right, for my sheet, I've got ketchup and potatoes in the ingredients used section, and the order of this plate up is as follows. I'm gonna start with a dollop of ketchup puree on the bottom of my plate. Then I'm gonna do a smear of that, place on my potato steak and three per of my potato obliques. After that, I'll do my potato shaves, finishing with ketchup gel dots, as well as my potato herbs, quote unquote, and a spoon of my ketchup sauce. For today, I'm gonna do a linear plate up of mine. I'm gonna document the date. I'm gonna commit to doing 10 plates, and then I'm gonna do a column layout here. Again, if you wanna deep dive on that, I sound like a broken record, but it's on the Repertoire YouTube channel. If you're ready to go, let's run it. So first off, I'm snagging my steaks and obliques both on the same tray, as well as my deli container of ketchup puree. I'm doing a one-two punch of dollop of puree, smear, dollop, smear, dollop, smear. After that's done, I'll run through all of my steaks and put them on the plate. I'm going for the lower third of my linear setup, if you will, for where my steak goes. I'm gonna pop one oblique on the top of the steak and the other two on both one o'clock and seven o'clock on my steak. From there, I'm gonna spin my potato shaves so that these ribbons ends up as a twirled circle and then I'm gonna plate one right next to the upper oblique piece and one right next to the seven o'clock oblique piece. Then I'll do some dots of my ketchup gel, making sure to avoid blowouts, making perky dots with some height to them. Hashtag perky dots break. These are the little details that you wanna make sure you're hitting accuracy on. It's easy to go fast on steps like this and just steamroll right through this part. And if you get to the end and none of your dots are consistent, they're different sizes, some have air bubbles, some are flat, that's not good. And tracking your time on reps is about judging your own execution. If you don't think it's good, don't count it, do it again. That's why this exercise is designed this way. This isn't truffle puree. We're not plating with Wagyu right now. The point is, of course, to get faster, but it's to get faster at being consistent. Make sense? All right, with these dots being done, that gives me some sticky glue spots to place my potato herbs, quote unquote. So I'll do five of those, making sure to use both hands, not just putting herbs in my hand and placing one at a time. Last up, we gotta finish with sauce. And I'm gonna say this is one full spoon per, and the metric I'm tracking here is little to no drips on the rims of the plates. My goal is to have a very clean saucing maneuver on every single plate as much as possible. And then boom, stop the timer, log your time. That's what's amazing about this exercise is that with the ingredients that I used, you can literally put everything into a Cambro. You can scrape the ketchup back into the sauce and puree containers, and then you can wash the potatoes off and then we can run it again and check our time and run it again and check our time. Now I know you might be like, Justin, I can do puree smears. I'm struggling with squeeze bottle swooshes or rochets or two-handed quenelles or shingling or offset side-by-side -side arrangements or literally anything else at work that you do that is lacking. That's also the beauty of this exercise because my advice would be just build it into this routine. I just showed you how to make herbs out of potatoes for goodness sake. You can figure out a practical way to practice your technique and build it into a routine like this. Because the reality is, and most of you folks know this, being able to do a bottle swoosh once is whatever. Doing it 10 times on an actual pickup while the person on row station is asking if the plates are ready is the performance moment that we're actually pushing for, right? So let's get used to practicing with that kind of pressure and in that type of environment. Question of the day for you folks, what was your first dreaded plate up technique? Or maybe you can talk about the dish that it was for. Because for me, it was absolutely this squeeze bottle swoosh maneuver. I've talked about it multiple times because th this is me projecting. I could not, for the life of me, get my swooshes to be consistent. And I always had to redo my plates and I was wasting mise en place when I would try to do it. And it was beyond frustrating. So I hope this helps. This is also for younger Justin. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this. Don't forget to make the like button, do the cool confetti thing that it does now. Download that PDF in the description if you haven't already yet. It really helps track your progress with this exercise. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.